Hey, Kevin here, top one financial advisor and best-selling author, and we are here to talk about the stock market. And I want you to imagine a situation. Just kind of go into a time machine if it even requires that, but just, just think for a second, okay? If you are investing in a company and they come out and tell you that they have doubled their sales and that this is the best quarter that they've had in the last 10 years, and they come out and tell you that we think demand is still going to be robust. It's still going to be big this year in 2022. Do you think that stock would make money? Do you think the stock would jump? The answer is, yeah, it should. That's not what happened with NVIDIA. And yes, they did have their best quarter in 10 years. And yes, their sales did double f from last year. And the stock dropped 7.5%. And for me, this, this is a buying opportunity. Now, I, I have shares of NVIDIA for the long term. I also had some shares for, you know, a little short-term money here and there. And when the market, you know, the market is not the smartest thing in the world as, as a mechanism, right? It is not the smartest thing. There are, there are times, and we talked about this before, I say... I don't like earning season for, you know, for trading, right? If I'm trying to get in and out of a company right now, I, I avoid earnings because it can be a really overreactive time. Something happens and stock drops 25% in a day. Come on, man. It, it wasn't that serious, right? And when NVIDIA comes out and says, we hit a record sales number, we have made the most money we've ever made, and we still think there's plenty of money to be made this year, and it still drops, that does not make any sense, which tells me the company is strong. Um, they say they're going to be strong this year, and it just happens to drop. That is a dip worth buying to me, right? There's a difference. I always say there's not every dip is the same. This is one of those dips that makes sense. And another... I guess, point of, of reference and context, the, over the last six months, NVIDIA is up like 22%. The overall stock market, the S&P 500, is down close to 2%. 22% in the last six months, which shows you it's going in a different direction than the market as a whole, or it had been going in a different direction as a, um, from the market as a whole. So I got 22% gains in NVIDIA the last six months compared to about 2% for the overall stock market. I think that's, that's relatively clear. If I go back a year, we're looking at close to 60% gains in NVIDIA. And I know it's like 14 or 15%, if not less, over the past year for the overall stock market. That's that's clear, right? This is just a, a strange blip for NVIDIA. And if if I'm, you know, I do own it. So I actually invest like, I don't know, it's like $25 a month. I do this on Cash App. Got plenty of investing apps out there. Um, it's like every two weeks, it's like another $25 or so in NVIDIA. So I'm going to get some more anyway. It's just going to go on autopilot. But this is one of those those instances, and we talk about this all the time. We talk about this all the time during earnings season, that sometimes it's really wildly unpredictable, and this is one of those cases. But also, just bringing back all these lessons together, if you're trying to invest and you're new to this, this is one of those learning experiences to show you that earnings can be weird. And sometimes it just doesn't make sense. And there are opportunities here. For me, this is an opportunity. And that's that's not to say that, you know, $245 is a perfect price. It could drop tomorrow. There's still stuff going on in Russia and Ukraine that continue to wreak havoc on the market. Like, there are other factors out there. But if you're telling me they just got off a record year and they're still doing well and their product is still incredibly useful for what we need today it's not something that was just a fad then this this seems like a discount this seems like the stock is on sale again i don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow it could fall it could drop it could go up i don't know but this seems like a eh, this is a strange like hey yeah i'd probably buy that right um so this is you you always gotta pay attention to what's going on in the market and learn how to separate and see what is a discount? What is a dip worth buying? And then what is just like, hey, that is just a falling knife, something that's just consistently dropping and there's no real clear entry point. There is a difference. I know I bring up these stocks all the time, but they're the most prevalent examples and they're the ones that alert me all the time when I'm getting like all of these pings. Like when you talk about Square and you talk about PayPal, every other day or so, there are new alerts that they hit a new 52 week low. Facebook hit a new 50 or meta, meta platforms. They hit a new 52 week low today. At one point today, I don't know if they closed at that point. I'm not entirely sure if the dip is worth buying in Facebook 
based on them losing users. Remember, we talked about the importance of reading, right? Them losing users for the first time ever, how much money they're spending on the metaverse and whether or not that's going to pay off. I tend to think that it will, but you know, I'm, I could be a little biased there. But in either case, like, there's, a, there's a difference. There's a difference between NVIDIA did well, had record sales, and it dropped, and then Facebook losing users, spending a whole bunch of money, having a lot of negative press and lawsuits, and them dropping the 25% or whatever it was that dropped. They dropped. That, there's a difference. In fact, even with, um, with Meta, Facebook, they have dropped in their rankings. They were one of the top like five or 10 companies in the U.S., and with today's loss, they're no longer in there. It's one of their worst days of the year outside of that earnings day. It ain't looking good for them. That's not to say that Facebook is dead even though you can make that case, right? But it is something to be concerned about. Um, so you always got to sit, sit back and this is where that, that reading and that research comes into play between these two companies. Another example when it comes to meta platforms, and I'm just spitting off the dome right here, is that recall that uh, Google, well, first off, Apple was the first one to release their privacy updates that kind of curtails how Facebook collects data and how they are effective in, in serving ads. The way that Facebook really works behind the scenes, other than all the stuff they do to keep you engaged and addicted to their social media platform. Again, conversation for the other day, but outside of that, they collect your information to give you what they think are relevant advertisements. For example, in my own personal life, y'all see that I wear a lot of school paraphernalia. High school, which is where I'm from. This is our high school seal. Booker T. Washington found in 1913. We talk a little bit about it in the book. Um, but aside from there, you see that I wear this. I wear some of my Texas gear because I went to UT Austin for my master's. I went to an HBCU, so I'll wear, you know, my, my sister's college. I'll wear mine. Like, I just wear a lot of random stuff. So guess what that is you think I see on Facebook? Some of that stuff I get from Facebook, right? So they take that information that, oh, you like these things, we're going to give you these types of ads. Well, because I'm usually on this on my iPhone, they can easily now, they used to be able to say, oh, he, he likes these things, he goes to these websites, therefore we'll, we'll give him these advertisements. Or due to Facebook's privacy opt-out, I can say, yeah, y'all can't track me no more. Makes it harder for Facebook to put forth relevant ads, which means that the businesses that are advertising that say, eh, I don't know if I want to spend money with you anymore. I want to go somewhere else. Maybe I'll go to Google. Well, now Google is also rolling out some things that can also damage Facebook because, again, they, they're collecting that those Google searches, all those cookies and information, and using that um, for their advertising platform. So, you know, if we're talking about Android, which is another platform that Facebook has to, to be on, Facebook can also be hit there. So they have to be careful about how they're going to succeed. Facebook doesn't control the rail. Again, all of these things are factors from research that, you know, things we're reading, but also these are factors to say, eh, I don't know. I'm not as confident in buying the dip for Facebook versus something like NVIDIA, which again, record sales, I think about 53% or whatever it was year over year, but we know people are using it. They don't have a lot of controversies and issues. They don't have any major company blocking them, right? From, from producing what they're producing, they might be all right. Right. So you always want to make sure that you're reading and understanding why something can drop. Is it random and just doesn't make sense like an NVIDIA or is it an overreaction? But I see where you're going in something like a Facebook, maybe something like a Netflix, maybe. Right. You always want to take your time and say there's a difference between just buying the dip blindly. OK, you buying the dip blindly is not just because people say buy low, sell high doesn't mean buy everything low and hope that everything goes back high. Mm, they don't they don't work. It, it sounds good on paper. Sometimes it works. NVIDIA, it might work. Um, you know, Facebook, we'll, we'll see, right? PayPal, Square, Block. People keep changing their names. These companies keep changing their names. Um, we'll, we'll see, right? So you do want to be careful in the way that you can tell the difference or the way that you can be more or you can be right more often than not is going through and taking the time to just read a few articles like the only reason i can tell you that information is because i sat down and read a few articles before doing this video i said you know i'll sit between lunch you know when the kids are asleep and we'll go through and read and say okay this is what's going on with the company another example right when we talked about those daily habits this is how you can get that information and really separate what might work and what may not work is having a few alerts. For example, I know Shopify at one point today was down like 4.53 percent. I'm a visual learner. I saw that one come up from public. Um, so that's a yeah. Doesn't mean I need to react to everything, but 
I don't know. Maybe Shopify announced earnings. I literally don't know. It it could have. I think they did this week. I know Walmart did. Um, but in either case, in either case, the moral of the story is number one, earnings season each season can be really stupid. It it just does not make sense. But it can also be an opportunity provided that you understand what's going on. And not every dip, not every drop is the same. Some can be falling knives where they fall and they keep on falling. Some can fall for no real apparent reason, like NVIDIA, and have a clear path moving forward. NVIDIA was $265 just a few days ago. Now, that's not to say it's going to be there again, but I kind of think it would be relatively soon. That's just me. Um, So in that case, maybe it's a buying opportunity. Depends on what happens tomorrow. And maybe you'll catch it. It'll bounce and it'll be fine. Others, you got to be a lot more careful about. So that is it for me today. I know it was relatively short. It was kind of a a rant, if you will. Um, But if you want me to cover uh, another company, feel free to to let me know in the comments below. Also, ask me some questions. I I have not gotten... Now, we did do a few questions and answers when it came to expense ratios. But I I, I love questions. Y'all know I'm a teacher at heart. Ask me some stuff that I have not covered. (laughs) I'll I'll do a video on it. We also have a great job portfolio. I'm going to try and get that out tomorrow, provided that nothing crazy happens in the market. All right. That is it for me. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.